My name is Larry. I'll be your safari driver through the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. Just a few reminders before we get out there. I do need everybody fully seated at all times. It gets bumpy, and I don't want you falling over, falling out, or getting hurt. If you have children, they're welcome to sit on your lap or even toward the outside of the room. They just have to be seated. So parents, supervise your children. Children, supervise your parents. You know how crazy your parents can get. And last but not least, as we drive through the reserve, have fun. Get excited. Take photos and talk to each other. Just don't try to talk to the animals. Go off and people will yell and shout and whistle and make clicking and kissing noises toward these creatures. While that might seem harmless to you and I, it is disturbing to the wildlife and it's obnoxious. I think that covers it though. So here we are in the Aturi Forest and already I see an okapi and a greater kudu. Now the okapi is off to the right there on top of the hill. White striped legs, velvety red brown coat. Don't let the okapi striped legs fool you though. It's the only known living relative to the giraffe. And here on our left, the greater kudu, second tallest antelope on the reserve. Greater kudu are very quiet, very secretive after they give birth. The mother and the child will stay away from the group for a few weeks. That way the child can grow up a little bit and they can both stay hidden and stay safe. Now coming up on our left is a small pond. We call this a watering hole. Great place for animals to gather and drink water. In fact, on top of the hill across the watering hole, I see a black rhinoceros over there. A very solitary creature. They do prefer living by themselves. But I'm very glad to be seeing one this... Oh, two this morning. There's one to our far left as well. There's also some more greater kudu over here on our right. Now is a great time of day to be here. Get to see all these animals waking up and being active. Around midday, a lot of these creatures tend to find quiet, shady spots to take a break. After all, it does get very warm out this direction. Now the black rhino has a pointed lip that allows it to pick leaves off of bushes and trees a little bit easier. The white rhino has a wide flat mouth and truth be told that's really the easiest way to tell the two apart because there's little to no color difference between the two. Now over here on our right though are some bongo. Copper colored antelope, the bongo are known as the ghosts of the forest because of how rare they are. They're mainly nocturnal, quite a bit more active at night than they are during the day. So these antelope will probably find a nice quiet place to relax here in an hour or two. Looks like uh, one's crossing the road up here in front of us. Now, of course, this is their home, not ours. We don't want to spook these creatures. So we'll go ahead and let the uh, bongo cross. We won't uh, try to push it out of the way or hurry it along or anything. Because the more comfortable these animals are around us, the closer we get to them. It's also one of my favorite birds out to our left. That's a saddle-billed stork over there. Easily five feet tall. They have a wingspan of up to nine feet across. And while most birds will communicate vocally, that bird only communicates by rattling its bill. Now we're moving along deeper into the woods over toward the Safi River Valley. So oh, and then here's some more hippos out to our left over here. Oh, like the bongo, hippos are mainly nocturnal as well. So we're very lucky to be seeing him, so awake right now. The pelicans over there are pink-backed pelicans. They are the smallest pelican species, and they're the only ones known to make nests in trees. That's why even though these trees have been broken apart for quite some time, the pelicans still enjoy making their nests on them. Now, as we round the corner up ahead, just keep your eyes peeled down to the left. There might be a few more animals down there. Might be able, uh, might be a bit tough to point out here. Ooh, I even see some Nile crocodiles down to the left. The Nile crocodile grows 15 to 20 feet in length. They live to be about 45 years old in the wild. In captivity, they can live to be over 85 years old. So these crocodiles might very well be swimming the Safi River for the better part of a century. Now, I love crocodiles. I find them fascinating. But even I know that we should probably not stop above them. So we're going to go ahead and give them some space. We're going to leave the Safi River behind us. I'm going to take you out toward the savannah. The wide open plains are home to a large variety of animals like elephants, giraffe, and other large migratory herds like wildebeest, antelope, and zebra. Wardens also reported seeing an increase in predator activity along this section of the reserve, most notably the painted dog, also called the African wild dog, also known as the painted wolf. 
So if we're lucky, we might just find a few of those canids prowling about the plains. So well, here we are, approaching the Serengeti grasslands. They stretch for hundreds of miles and are home to millions of animals that travel across these these plains every year. This right here is the wild Africa we're trying very hard to conserve. Truly one of the last wild places left on Earth. Now here in front of us, coming up on our right, are some Ancoli cattle, the only domesticated creatures on the reserve. All these other animals, while well, very used to seeing us, are all still technically wild. But the Ancoli cattle have been raised and bred for many centuries now, a sign of wealth and prosperity to the folks that own them. Those horns on their head are massive. They're also mostly hollow. They're part of the creature's circulatory system. Hot blood will go up through the horns, cool off, and then go back through the body, making sure that even on hot days, the Ancoli cattle get to stay cool. Now ahead of us on our right, I'm seeing a few more animals. I see some Hartman's Mountain Zebra up ahead. I also see some Springbok and some Maasai Giraffe. Springbok are these itty bitty antelope off to the right with the white belly and the tan back and the dark stripe down their side. They're called Springbok because they can spring up in the air six feet up and 13 feet forward in a single jump. They're also incredibly fast. They can run 50 to 60 miles an hour. Oh, I also see some painted dogs over here on our left, laying down just underneath the bamboo back there. Now, don't be fooled by the painted dogs' adorable appearance. They are still the most successful predator of mammals in Africa. They'll chase their prey till their prey drops from exhaustion and can't run any further, and that's what makes them so successful. A lot of these creatures is while we are seeing uh, lots of patterns, lots of uh, different species with different patterns, even in the same species, none of their patterns are going to be exactly alike. No two giraffe spots are the same, no two zebra stripes are the same, and that's how they tell each other apart. Now the Hartman's Mountain Zebra are the least territorial zebra species. They enjoy hanging out with other animals. Many other zebra species tend to uh, prefer living just with their own. And you can see looks like a mama and a baby over here. Maybe it's still very very tired, it looks like. Might be an early morning for them. If I had to guess at the baby's age, I'd say close to six months old. They grow up fast though, and an hour within an hour of being born, a zebra can stand, walk, and run to keep up with the rest of its family. Last look at the springbok and the Maasai giraffe on our right. Another look at those Ancoli cattle. But up ahead of us, beyond the trees over here, I see some white bearded wildebeest. A gray antelope with dark faces and short, sharp, curved horns on their head. Wildebeest are part of one of the largest migrating herds in Africa. Their herds have been known to number in the millions. Generally in a family of sable, the one with the longest horns and the darkest coat is the leader. Now out to our left though, I see some mandrills underneath the trees. Biggest monkeys in the world when fully grown. They have bright blue and red faces, very colorful rears. Seeing one at the base of the tree. I thought I saw a few more back there. They tend to be very shy around our trucks despite being a very social monkey. Now, I would like to try and find more elephants, so what we're going to do here, instead of taking a left like we're supposed to, we're going to go ahead and stick to the right, even though both roads up ahead are technically closed. Uh, this road's closed for obvious reasons. There's not a road there anymore. But I guess I should explain about the road in front of us. You see, the wardens claim the bridge up ahead is cursed. They say every time a sorry truck like this one drives across, the bridge falls apart, and then it will reform itself to look like nothing ever happened, so it might claim another victim. But I don't believe in ghost stories, so we're going to cross it anyway. Besides, this bridge looks safe. What's the worst that could possibly happen? Huh? 
told you it was safe. Anyways. Ah, looks like we're approaching some red clay pits. Elephants love to eat red clay. It gives them a lot of vitamins and minerals they might not get elsewhere in their diet. Seeing quite a few fresh husk marks, and I think I can make out some footprints leading off to the left. Oh, hey, there are some elephants up ahead. Wow, look at the size of that one. You know, this group here might be a bachelor herder. A herd of male elephants that have reached adulthood but are still a bit more social than the others. Because usually in a herd of elephants, it's adult females and their children, led by the matriarch. And then when the males get old enough, they're usually, uh, they go through a period called a musking period where they tend to be a little bit grumpy, a little aggressive. The family doesn't want that around the kids. So they're usually kicked out and they'll live by themselves. But after that period's over, the more social ones will gather together with other males in groups like this. The trunk of theirs is very powerful, very useful tool for them. It's delicate enough to pick up a potato chip without breaking it. It's strong enough to break bamboo stalks in half. Now ahead of us, coming up on our left, we are going to see some greater flamingos, as well as some greater flamingo babies. Greater flamingos get that pink color from the beta carotene found in the shrimp they eat, so it takes the babies about two years of eating shrimp to turn pink. Now we're approaching one of my favorite areas of the reserve. This is the last place we are lucky enough to see the white rhinoceros. Uh, oh, there they are again. Large and powerful, but not territorial. They don't mind us getting close to them. We can tell these are white rhinos because they have a wide, flat mouth. Allows them to graze grass a little bit easier. Now, if the black and the white rhino were standing side by side, there is a uh, great size difference between them. White rhino weighs about 5,000 pounds. The black rhino weighs about 3,000. Now rhinos in general have pretty terrible eyesight. They rely on their hearing and sense of smell. That's why every now and then you'll see those rhinos pointing their ears towards us, trying to listen to us, figure out who we are and what we're doing. I see a couple of cheetahs up on the ridge to our left and another uh, oh, rhino up ahead I'm coming up on our left. Now cheetahs are some of the fastest oh, yeah. land mammals alive, sprinting at speeds of well over 60 miles an hour. Well, they can only hold that top speed for a couple hundred yards. After that they get awfully tired and have to cool down. Cheetahs tend to chase small prey, like gazelles and warthogs. Rhino like this would absolutely be off the menu. In fact, rhinos have little to no natural predators because of how large and how powerful they are. But again, thankfully, they're not territorial. You can see this rhino is mostly just inspecting the environment, looking for food. Maybe trying to catch up to the rest of his family group. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and we'll let him. Oh, look at that. There's a couple lions near the edge of the rocks. Now the females, like these two here, will go hunting in groups to take down prey sometimes larger than themselves. The male will stay back and protect the family group and the territory. Big mane around his neck generally protecting him from other predators that might try to attack him. I saw a couple Bontowak off to the right, but we'll get closer to them here in a second. I want to try and get one more look at these, uh, the female lions here, and then we'll get closer to the male up ahead. 
Now they may not necessarily be sleeping, but lions do need about 20 hours of rest a day. And that's because uh, when they do go hunting, they use all of their energy up, and they don't want to waste energy early in the day if it means that they'll miss out on dinner. And there he is, the king of the savannah, surveying everything the light touches. see some warthogs up ahead. Okay, right. I'm going to back into the burrows they dig, so whatever's chasing them has to deal with those tusks first. Now, in the movie The Lion King, the warthog is named Pumba. However, Pumba does not mean warthog. Pumba is a Swahili word. It means foolish. Right, Say a fitting name for the character. Just don't tell Pumba I said that. All right, now we're getting one last look at that rhino tromping around off to our right. There's also those Bontabak over there. Purplish brown antelope, the Bontabak, are closely related to the wildebeest. Though, while the wildebeest might migrate in the millions, the Bontabak were almost declared extinct at one time. Thankfully, because of reserves like this, that is no longer the case. They are being protected out here. Where there were once only about 20 left in the world, there are now over 20,000. Now, I know a few of you have been out here on safaris before, but if you were here on the reserve a little over, maybe, eight or nine years ago, might remember we used to have quite a few run-ins with poachers. They were after the elephants, Big Red and Little Red, for their ivory tusks. Now don't worry, well those elephants are safe, Little Red's huge, we just call her Red. Anyway, finally ran those poachers out of here while they tore up the area here pretty bad. All of our restoration efforts since to be going into the land, getting the grass to grow back and the trees to look very healthy. We're now trying to conserve this space to protect uh, animals that might wander through here. Now there's a lot of work going on out here, but did you know we can do very similar projects in our own neighborhoods? It all begins with research. By learning. Right now though, we are nearing the edge of the reserve and that means we're nearing the end of our safari. I've had a wonderful time with you though, and I hope you've had a wonderful time too, because here on Kilimanjaro Safaris, we like to go wild. Always feel free to visit again though. No two safaris are ever the same. The animals make sure that. And a different driver can always tell you different things about these animals. Of course, my name is Larry, and as Ante Sana, thanks for joining me here today. And here in Harambe, we say Quaharini, as Quaharini means to go well. Hope you have an adventure wherever your travels take you next. Now is a great chance to check your seats, though. Please make sure you have everything and everyone you've been traveling with. Got a little bumpy out there. Don't want to leave anybody behind. Now as we pull up to the dock up ahead, just watch those doors on the right, they will be sliding open. You'll also want to watch your step down, there's a slight drop from the truck to the dock. Not a very large one, just enough one to where you should watch where you're going. Any trash or recyclables, there's a trash can on the dock. There's also a hand sanitizing station just beyond it. So again, Asante Sana, thanks for joining me here today. Quaharini, and of course to my wilderness explorers on board, the wilderness must be explored! Ha ha! Roar!